والسلام وعلى خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of the universe and all within. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We all know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been very compassionate and merciful towards all his creations, in particular human beings. And this level of compassion can be seen in the fact that Allah did not only create us and then left us on our own to fend for ourselves, to figure out our own way of protecting ourselves from the hellfire and being admitted to paradise instead he has helped us on the way so he has sent prophets and messengers from time to time and he has also sent revelations this is all part of the concern and the love and the care that Allah the Creator has for human beings that's how much he wants us to avoid the hellfire and be admitted to paradise. But he's not going to do that, as we might say, for free, per se. So we have to do what we need to do, and we need to avoid what we need to avoid in order to go to paradise. So it's not a free ride. And the reason for that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the freedom of choice. He gave us the freedom of choice, a high level of intelligence that would enable us to make choices and to think. And as a result, He has given us the opportunity to make our choices regarding whether we want to avoid the hellfire and go to paradise or not. And so, Allah the Exalted has given us, brothers and sisters, a lot of help along the way. And often, besides the prophets and messengers and, and, and the revelation itself, often, every day, there are little things that occur that serve as, as we say, a wake-up call for us. Often, we may not pay attention to these things, though. But that's where we need to be. We need to get to the point. We need to be where, when these things happen every day, they're not just considered as you know, a mundane thing. It happens all the time, no big deal. <coughs> yes, it may happen all the time. There are certain laws that Allah has decreed that govern the unfolding of life and existence. But at the same time, these events or these incidents are supposed to be an eye-opener for us as well, a wake-up call. And I'm saying all of this because on Friday and Saturday, we celebrated Eid. Some people did it on Fridays, others did it on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I had to attend the Janazah. The mother of a, a good friend of mine passed away. And as I attended the funeral prayer, the Janazah, and then we went to the cemetery, I realized, I said, SubhanAllah, Look, look at this, only the day before or two days before we were celebrating Eid MashaAllah and everybody is in a festive mood and happy. And then at about 10 a.m. on Sunday I got the call that there is Salat al-Janazah at the foundation at 1.45, two and, two, two and a half hours later. That's not all. After the Janazah, by the way, I had to perform a nikah. In fact, because of the Janazah, I was a little bit late for the nikah. And again, I thought, I said, SubhanAllah, you know, two days ago we're celebrating Eid and everybody's happy, MashaAllah. I don't know if we really thought about even death during those two days. And then the next day, there is a death, there is a janazah. And then soon after the janazah, leaving the cemetery, I drove straight to the masjid where I had to perform the nikah. And again, you know, the nikah is a... Uh, an occasion that is one of happiness and joy. And there is nothing wrong with happiness and joy. 
But looking back, I said, SubhanAllah, you know, this is an eye-opener for us. That there are times when we're happy and when we're, when we're joyous and so on. But we must remember that the one thing that is yaqeen, the one thing that is absolutely certain, is that death will come. So it behooves us, brothers and sisters, to constantly do self-reflection, you know, evaluation as we say. We should constantly take a look at ourselves, question our, our path in life, where we're going. I know in, in our everyday lives, we're very familiar with the, the concept of evaluation and how important it is for success. Because evaluation is the only way you can tell whether you're achieving your targets or you're missing them. The only way is to evaluate your performance. And even if the evaluation shows that your performance is not up to par, there is still a good thing in this, in that you can now, now you have this knowledge, you can work harder. If, if we did not engage in an evaluation, we will never know that we're not uh, hitting the target. So we may never work harder. We may never change our strategies. And so we keep going further and further away. So the evaluation is absolutely vital to ensure that we don't miss the target, that we don't go straight, but we stay on target and we achieve them, inshallah. So we need to engage in this sort of self-reflection. Um, it doesn't mean you sit down for a whole hour and you know take apart your life minute by minute. But perhaps a few, a few minutes every now and then, where a person sits down and just reflects on what is it I'm doing, where I'm headed, wh where I've come from. Because after all, brothers and sisters, we all, deep down in our hearts, we know the right from wrong. We know truth from falsehood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Qiyamah, بَلِ الْإِنسَانُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بَصِيرًا Nay, the human being is a witness against himself. Even though he offers excuses, we always do this, right? We, help, we, we come up with excuses. Even when we come up with excuses, often we know deep down inside, we know what the truth is, we know what the reality is. So we should not let the excuses become the reality. That's the illusion. The excuses that we make, the reality is what we're trying to hide and cover what we're trying to run from. So subhanAllah, every human being, we recognize the truth, we recognize what is right from what is wrong. But of course, there are many, many factors that affect why someone will not embrace the truth. It is always baffling to look at the Meccans, for example, Quraysh, and the fact that many of them never embraced Islam despite the fact not only that they recognized the message as, a, as the truth but they also knew the messenger very well they knew the Prophet ﷺ, he grew up with them among them so when it came to his character his integrity his honesty he was blameless they knew this so any logical, rational, sane person would have thought, well, hey, if this person, whom we have absolutely no doubts about his integrity and his honesty, if he is telling us something, then maybe there is some truth to it. Maybe. Consider it. But they didn't. But despite this, it's not that they didn't recognize the truth as the truth. They did recognize the truth as the truth. But there were many factors one of, the, one of the biggest factors for them, because most of the people who disbelieved in the Prophet ﷺ among Quraysh were people of power and wealth and position in society. And they understood from this message that the Prophet ﷺ invited them to. They understood that it, embracing this message would mean being willing to give up the position and the authority and the power. And just be regular, ordinary. And they couldn't stomach this. 
When the Prophet ﷺ told them, Kulu la ilaha illallah, illallah, to flip him. Say la ilaha illallah, you'll be successful. They didn't say it. Why? Because they understood. He wasn't just asking them to pay lip service. They understood what that statement meant. What it implied, its implications, its consequences. And they weren't ready for that. They didn't want to, to bring themselves to that point. But the thing is, they recognized the truth as the truth. They knew that deep down in their hearts. And this is why after the Battle of Badr, 70 of them were killed. Their bodies were thrown into a well. And the Prophet ﷺ, he went to the mouth of the well and he looked down on the dead bodies in the well. And he said to them, هَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّ فَإِنِّي قَدْ وَجَدْتُ مَا وَعَدَنِي رَبِّي حَقَّ He said, have you found what your Lord has promised you to be the truth? For I have found what my Lord promised me to be the truth. And the Sahaba said to him, Ya Rasulullah, these are dead people, they can't hear you. They're dead. And he said, they can very well hear me, they just can't reply to me. But the, the, the question he asked them is quite significant. Have you found what your Lord has promised you to be the truth? For I have found what my Lord promised me to be the truth. So as Allah says, everyone is a witness against his own self. Even though we make up excuses. Even though we hide behind excuses. And this is why we shouldn't make up excuses actually. You know, we should own up to what we do. And if it's wrong, apologize and move on. So we need to engage in this you know, self-reflection and this evaluation. And look at the events that are happening around us every day. These same small little things. Because in it are signs for us. There are lessons for us that an individual can learn from. That despite how much, you know, how healthy and young we are, and how much family and friends we have around us, we have to die. And in all the festivities of the Eid, the sister passed away. And we had to perform our janazah. Right. Family came in all the way from the States. I saw some license plates from New York and, and other places. Just for the funeral. So subhanAllah, let us brothers and sisters evaluate our own lives. Ramadan has finished only four or five days now. We need to evaluate. At the very least, think about what, where, we hope, where we hope to go from here. Ramadan has been a journey, mashaAllah took us in a certain direction. The big question we need to ask now is what direction do we continue with? In the same direction or do we make a U-turn? So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed for mankind. May He inspire us and motivate us to live by this message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us to constantly engage in self-reflection and in evaluation. May He show us the truth as the truth and help us to follow that and show us the wrong as wrong and help us to avoid that. May He help us to follow the sunnah of the Prophet May He help us and guide us to revive the sunnah of the Prophet And may He protect us from going astray and from innovations and from deviation. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته